we'll get started. First of all, thank you for coming. Like it's the beginning of period sixes. I think you're going to get a lot more used to them very quickly. But to begin with, it does feel like a new thing and kind of an extra thing we're asking you to do. I won't spend too much time talking about what it is because I've, I've told you all loads. Um, but we're focusing today on the 16 mark question. So it's how far do you agree question? And the reason that we're doing it is because we genuinely think that drilling this question and becoming incredibly good at answering this question is going to be your ability to move up up to two grades. So if you're at grade seven, aim for grade nine. If you're grade four, aim for grade six. Because it's only about 20 marks. And if we smash this 16 mark question, it will be the difference. Goes at the back, just make sure you're listening, please. So what we're doing today, we're looking at the 16 mark question. The one that you're looking at is on the board. And what I've done is I've printed it or a copy of it and handed it around the room. So what you should have is a copy of the 16 mark exam paper. R1 is the second one. So it's the Robert Peel one, number six. What I'd like to do is to draw a circle, box, whatever, around that question so we know that's the one that we're focusing on. So the question that is on the board Do you want to quickly run and see if you can find someone for maths, just because they're going to know? Thank you. Okay, so everything that I do today really is us planning as if it's a 16 mark question, as if it's the exam in June. The first thing that you would do with that 16 mark question, I think the obvious thing is, is read it. But the key thing is that we identify what we need to do. So if I actually get it up on the visualizer, the first step is probably easier to do that way. If you can't see, it may be that you need to move in order to see. There's loads of space here. I'm trying to get these working, but you just got to bear with me. So the first thing that I would do is I would create a quick table. Cool. Uh, create a quick table. This question here, the statement is Robert Peel's work was the most significant change to law enforcement. That's our statement. And we have to either agree to it or we have to disagree to it. Can everyone see that? Yeah. Cool. So on one side, we've got agree. And on the other side, we've got disagree. Now, Wilden, where are you? I know you did this for your revision. What's John, uh, John Peel? What's Robert Peel well known for? Yes, so his key thing is that he developed the Metropolitan Police, one of the key things for law enforcement. So our agree, we can put Peel, semicolon, the Met Police. And sorry to uh, pick on you again, Wilden. What year? How good's that revision? 18? No, 1829. He's go with those revision notes again. Um, so that's going to be our agree. We can argue that he was the biggest impact because he developed the Metropolitan Police, the way that we enforce the law now with the police. But it also gives you other examples. So it gives you the disagree, which is the bloody code. And they are 200 plus crimes punishable by what, Dylan? Yeah. So that was introduced because crime was exploding and it's taken away because it's not working. And in the third one, it gives you a man called Henry Fielding. Henry Fielding, does anyone remember what he did? No, it's one of those ones no one ever does remember. Azir? Yeah, he developed the Bow Street Runners. It's like a very early police force. Very, very early police force. So that is our quick plan. And it actually identifies Peel number one, which is Robert Peel, or PED number one, P-E-E-D. P-E-E-D number two, which is Bloody Code. And then P-E-E-D of Henry Fielding or the Bow Street Runners. 
In terms of knowledge, these sessions are not about knowledge. So what we've done is we've print off every single bit of information that you're going to need. It should be around the room now. Crib sheet of knowledge. You're going to take this today and that becomes another source of revision for you. But it means that we don't have to worry about learning or going over stuff we've learned before. We can just focus on the exam skills. Yeah? Bloody code, 200 plus crimes punishable by death. Sorry. So the first things that we do then, identify the question and make a quick plan. And we've said if we agree to the statement, we're going to be talking about Met Police and John Peel. And if we disagree, it's bloody code and it's going to be Henry Fielding or the Bow Street Runners. For this question, how many Peel paragraphs do we need, Billy? Three. Good. Sorry, mate, I can't hear you. I'm a long way away. Three paragraphs. Good. What else do we need, though? Victoria. Definitely. And one other thing, right at the beginning. Sienna? Intro. Yeah, introduction. So what we do, we're going to write that here. We need intro, 3 PED, and a conch. Better? So intro, 3 PED, and a conclusion. You good? Cool. So that's what we're going to need to do. Today's lesson, we are just going to focus on introduction and focus on the first peel. And I'm going to be modelling to you what I expect of you. Next week is where we go over it again and I might ask you to write one independently. But today, it really is just modelling. Um, before we begin though properly, there's one, two questions I want to ask you. Firstly, law enforcement. What is it? Um, Lottie, what's law enforcement? Um, it's, 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 it's yeah, people who make other people follow the law. They enforce the law. So in the time period that we're focused on today, 1700 to 1900, how was the law enforced? And there's three pictures there to help you. One is here, you're going to know. Yeah. Good, Bow Street Runners, very early police force. The one at the bottom is what, Talia? Who are those people? Kind of look how they do today. Yeah, police force, Met Police Force. And then there's the other one, which I thought was really obvious, but earlier that none of the teachers could get it. Lucy, who are they? Not my nan, by the way. It's not my nan. The community. the community, good. So there's three ways. One would be both street runners. One would be like the community in, at large, the general community. And the other one is the police force. So we're clear. Introduction is there for you. Introduce your point on whether or not you agree to the statement. Three pills or peds and a conclusion. First thing that we're going to do today, after the quick plan, which we've just done, is focus on our introduction. With this introduction, it really is simple. Introduce your three points, give your view and your opinion. Do you agree with the statement or do you not? The question, Peel's work was the most significant change to law enforcement. So it's saying that the introduction of the police was the biggest change to law enforcement from 1700 to 1900. Do we agree with that? It's difficult, but yeah, I would. Like the police force, before it's a community or individuals, and then you have this massive police force be brought in that changes everything, changes the way cities are policed, and we still have it today. So I'd be inclined to agree with that. But we do need to explain the impact of the other groups. Is there anyone who doesn't have the info sheet? Brilliant. What I'd like us to do, sir, could you just help me up? Pass these out, please. Just one to everyone. Cheers. So what I've also printed off is a mark scheme. 
This mark scheme, it comes from the teacher's examiner pack and it will tell you how to answer the question, how to grade it, but on the back it also gives you something called indicative content. This is the stuff you should have written about. You got it, you got it. You got it guys? Or no? All good? Three, two, one, and zero. So if we look at the question, with the question here, Robert Peel's work was the most significant change in law enforcement. How far do you agree? For this, there's AO1 and AO2. AO1 is knowledge, so having really good evidence and being able to deploy it. You can get six out of 16 for that. The key bit, is the 10 marks and that's evaluation. So that's explaining why something is the most significant or why something's the most important. For us and our classes, realistically, you're gonna be aiming for level three and four. And it will tell you what you need to do for those. The key thing for us is that term explanation you must explain the question. So you must explain why Peel was the most important or was, the, it was not the most important. And also there, some analysis. So being able to see why the police were a big change or see why the Bow Street runners were a big change. But the reason I'm really showing you this is that both need to have accurate information But when it comes to our judgment, you have to have a required judgment and it has to be justified. So you have to give reasons in your conclusion for your opinion. If you agree, you need to state reasons why. If you disagree, you need to state reasons why. But for this band, band four, and I want you to write this in, it must be sustained. And when we say sustained, what we mean is the same opinion throughout so you can't say oh i agree in one paragraph and i disagree in the other we have to create it so that your argument is sustained that you always agree or you always disagree and that starts from the very beginning so when it comes to the intro that's incredibly important that we get that right so if i go to my paragraph for my to my 16 marker sorry we need to pick a lane. We need to say whether we agree to the statement or we disagree to the statement. And the best way to do that is to say that you mostly agree or you mostly disagree. In this case though, we're gonna go for agree. So inside on that question, I do want you to just write mostly agree. And that's the angle we're gonna take because it means you can explain why you agree, but you can also explain why you disagree. Because you don't fully agree, you mostly. What? Yeah, come get it, mate. It's at the front, it's there. You're too kind, so I'd have made her walk in front of the camera. Right, so when we go to our question, I think the key thing as well it will always ask you question five or question six. Get it right. What question is this, Sam? Um, Robert Peel, which would be question number six. And the first thing that we need to do is that we need to write ourselves a introduction. And for a sustained judgment, you need to show your opinion from pretty much the first line. So the question is Robert Peel having the biggest impact or the biggest change. So what we're going to do is introduce that straight away. So the first line, I would say, I mostly agree to the statement. 
full stop. And then I'd introduce the points. Instead of going the long-winded way of saying, oh, I mostly agree to the statement that Robert Peel had the biggest impact, blah, 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 blah. You're much better saying, I agree to the statement, and then going into the, your points. So we agree. So we think Robert Peel had a massive impact. So I would say, I mostly agree to the statement, Robert Peel, and then we state what he did. Created the Metropolitan Police. Semicolon, changing law enforcement forever. So we've given our opinion there. We mostly agree to the statement, Robert Peel is incredibly important. Now we do have to introduce the other factors. So I'd probably say there, however, other factors also impacted law enforcement from what time period have we got? Look at the question. Shout it out. What's our time period? Kevin, question. What time period? 1700 to 1900. Thank you. So law enforcement from 1700 to 1900. So this includes changes to the bloody code and the work of the Bow Street Runners. So I mostly agree to the same thing. And I'd probably leave it at that. It should only take a minute or so, two minutes or so. Because actually, have we said our opinion? Yeah. And have we introduced the three things we're going to be talking about? Yeah. And it's all you need to do. And when we say a sustained argument, what we mean is the same argument all the way through. So to begin with, we've said, we agree it's Peel, but there are these two other factors as well. And then we'll do our three paragraphs on those three things, and our conclusion on those three things, that will then be sustained. That then allows you to access band four, or the top band. Any questions so far? Is there anyone who's still copying my model? Yeah. All right. If you have finished, what I'd like you to do is just go to your info sheet and just read through the top row. It's your agree row and it's all about Robert Peel. It's got evidence, it's also got explanation. Far less sugar in that than it used to be. About half the amount. You can taste it. But, um, I, I can't really afford it, I'll be honest. Uh, next week, there'll be biscuits because they're less expensive. Uh, I'll try and buy stuff every week, yeah. For, for a bit. Okay, three. Two, one, and zero. So I do have to come off it. Sorry, Lacey. Why are you not doing that then? Come on. Right. So step three. We've done our quick plan. We've done our introduction. Now we need to focus on our first paragraph. And that first paragraph, I would always base on 
the title question. So the question is talking about Robert Peel. So if that's me, I'm going to do my first paragraph about how Robert Peel had a massive or significant change in law enforcement. And that change is discovering or creating, sorry, the Met Police. Lucas, Lucas, I've got Simon calling me. I'm sorry, but could you take those cans down to Mr. Diskin? I'll, I'll make it up to you. You can have a can if you want. Sorry, sir. Thank you. Um, so the first thing that I would do is I would go to my info sheet. That info is the information that we're going to use to write our paragraphs. So if I'm agreeing, that is my point. My evidence is the second box. And then in terms of explanation or development, that is those points there. So everything is on this sheet that opens up or unlocks a, a 16 out of 16. It's the way we write it and the way that we use this information. So we need to identify evidence of what the Met Police was. And realistically, we can use as much of this as possible. So the Met Police, I would probably have established in London in 1829. Then we've got a highlighter like a boy, that would be much easier for me. Go on, Hala, throw it over. You're on camera, it's true. So the first thing I would do is I'd say when it was established. And then I'd give a bit more detail about how it functioned. So the fact that it was in London and there's 17 districts with four inspectors and 144 policemen operating in that area. And in a bit more detail, black uniform, big helmets and nightsticks. Had to be a man at this point. So that's our evidence. And if we can, use as much of that as we can. Because the more evidence, the easier it is to explain down the line. So if I, know, go, if I now go back to my first paragraph. The first thing that I would do link to the question. The question is about how who had the biggest impact, Tuck it. Uh, yeah. So, I would say the reason that I agree to the statement is Peel's creation of the Met Police, or Metropolitan, sorry, Police in what year, Aidan? No, wait, well done. Well done. 1829. and then give detail about them. So they operated in London, comma, making up 17 divisions, each with four inspectors, the ones who don't wear uniform, and 144 police officers and then got more detail to add they wore black uniforms helmets and carried a nightstick Truncheon, baton, whatever you want to call it. Big stick to hit people with.
So what we've done there is give really good evidence or really clear evidence about what Peel did. He introduced a police force. It's completely new. You've said what they wore. You said where they operated. But now we need to fully answer the question. So the question itself, can you just read the question one more time to me, please, Sam? Sorry to, to pick on you again. Nice and loud. So we need to explain how it is a massive change to law enforcement. And the obvious one is, before you're relying on the community or groups like the Bow Street Runners. Whereas now you have a group paid for by the government that is designed to deter or stop crime happening. So if we now go back to our information sheet, there's four bullet points there. In terms of it, a change to law enforcement, it's a change because it's actually created to deter or put people off committing crimes. And the reason that it wants to put people off is because there'd been a massive increase in crime during the Industrial Revolution. And there's also a real fear of uprisings and revolutions. France had had like a brutal revolution. Oh, hello, what's going on? Oh, sorry. Cheers, guys. Is that right? Sorry, who said sir? No? So yeah, like I was saying, there were uprisings in cities. So what they needed was a way to stop uprisings occurring. In France, the army had gone in to stop the uprising and it had made things infinitely worse. It ended up in a royal family getting murdered. So what they needed is a force of people who'd be sent in who weren't going to cause um, anger like the army would. And in terms of why it's so important, these last two are, are probably the key ones or the most important ones. The firstly is that the Met Police becomes the blueprint for every single police force. So our police force is based upon the Met Police. Devon Police, Essex Police, no matter where you are, is based upon Met Police. And that is part of the Police Act 1856. And then finally, the community is no longer the primary way of enforcing a law. Before you're relying on people, now you have a police force that is designed to stop crime. Law enforcement has massively changed. So what we now need to do is explain that. So if we go back to our exam paper, we've given relevant evidence, we've given high quality evidence. We now need to explain why it is a change to law enforcement. So use the question. Sam, sorry, read it out one more time. Cool. It's talking about law enforcement, so I'm going to repeat myself there. This led to enormous changes to law enforcement because, and now I need to explain why it is a change. Boys at the back, can you stop laughing and joking and being silly? You should be listening to me. Thank you. Uh, this led to enormous changes to law enforcement and I think the key thing is it's no longer community based. So that's the first thing that we're going to introduce. So law enforcement was no longer community based. Comma, the Met Police was in, sorry, was do, 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 responsible to the government.
So that's our first bit of explanation, but then we do need to develop it further. So firstly, it ends community, sorry, community responsibility for law enforcement. Now we say about the impact it had. So obviously it worked in London, but then we need to develop it further and say about how it was picked up by the rest of the country. So I'll probably introduce that with not only did Peel's police force revolutionise London, brackets, deterring and reducing crime, And then I'm, then I'm going to introduce the, the fact that it's spread and was used for other, other locations. I'll just let you guys catch up or keep up. Police here. So not only did Peel's police force, sorry, revolutionise London, Pardon? Um, hands up if you're still writing. Uh, brackets, deterring and reducing crime. Deterring and reducing crime. Right, so we'll carry on because I'm just changing pages. So not only did Peel's police force revolutionise London, deterring and reducing crime, but it also became the blueprint or the basis for for the rest of Britain's police force. And then if you look at your information sheet and what's in bold, we can add our specific example. This was part of the 1856 Police Act. And then the very last thing that we'll do is just touch upon the uprisings and how they didn't want to be like France because it's the army that attacked the population in France and it led to the French Revolution. So the last thing that we'll say is for the first time, Peel created a large scale force, comma, other than the army, comma, to enforce the law. Where, sorry? Scale, large scale.
And what I'll do now is just read through the paragraph to you. Well, I'll read through what we've got so far. So our introduction. I mostly agree to the statement. Robert Peel created the Metropolitan Police Force, changing law enforcement forever. However, other factors also impacted law enforcement from 1700. This includes changes to the bloody code and the work of the Bow Street Runners. We've introduced our argument. We've said what the three groups were, the three focus points are. The reason that I agree to this statement is Peel's creation of the Metropolitan Police Force in 1829. They operated in London, making up 70 divisions, each with four inspectors and 144 police officers. They wore black uniforms, helmets and carried a nightstick. Link to the question now. This led to enormous changes to law enforcement because law enforcement was no longer community based. The Met Police was, a, was responsible to the government. Not only did Peel's police force revolutionise London, reducing and deterring crime, but it also became the blueprint or basis for the rest of Britain's police force. This was part of the 1856 Police Act. For the first time, Peel created a large-scale police force other than the army to enforce the law. Now, the last thing that I want to do is just apply what we've got here to the mark scheme. And what we'll do is we'll go to band four for that one. Really, just to show you how planning like this and completing it like this benefits us. So, it says there, an analytical explanation. And that means to explain why we've made the decision that we've made, to explain the impact of Peel and what it did. We've done that. It says that everything that you write has to be directed consistently at the conceptual focus of the question. That means everything has to be aimed at law enforcement and how Robert Peel changed it. We've done that. Next part, accurate and relevant evidence or information. We've said the amount of police officers in the police force, we've said what they were, we've said where they operate. We've done that. And you need to show wide ranging knowledge and understanding of the features. Again, with the evidence and explanation, we've done that. And then lastly, Criteria for the required judgment are justified and applied to reach an overall judgment. That is a conclusion. So we'll do that bit next week. It's about one minute until four o'clock. Next week, when you arrive, you're going to have a model paragraph ready for you to arrive. So that's going to be the second PED, and then you guys are going to be writing the third one using the model we've done today and the evidence sheet that's here. What I need from you guys, every single thing into your green books, make sure your name is on the front of it, and I'd like you to leave it on a desk before you leave. <laughs>